we gather to celebrate the feast of the baptism of the Lord. In the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pause to place ourselves quietly and confidently in the presence of our loving God. Let's ask God to change our hearts, to direct our lives toward the love of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son has appeared in our very flesh, Grant, we pray, that we may be inwardly transformed through him whom we recognize as outwardly like ourselves, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street, a bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench. Until he establishes justice on the earth, the coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Give to the Lord, you sons and daughters of God. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Adore the Lord in holy attire. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over vast waters. The voice of the Lord is mighty. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The God of glory thunders, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord is enthroned above the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The heavens were opened and the voice of the Lord thundered. This is my beloved Son. Listen to him. Alleluia, alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord is with you and with your spirit. A reading from the good news of Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. This is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus from Nazareth came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit, like a dove, descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The baptism of Jesus posed a challenge for the early Christian community. John's baptism was an admittance of sin, a sign of metanoia, a change of heart, redirecting oneself toward God. If Jesus is the Son of God, why does he need to be baptized? We're pretty sure he got baptized as the event is recorded in each of the Gospels. Matthew tries to explain it away. John tells Jesus, you should baptize me. Jesus responds in his first words uttered in the Gospel of Matthew, let it go. We will fulfill righteousness. This seems to be the announcement of his life and ministry to preach the kingdom of God. Mark, in today's Gospel, reports that encounter between Jesus and John is wordless, except for the Father weighing in. You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. But Mark speaks in images as well. The heavens are torn open when the Father speaks. This harkens back to Isaiah. Late 63, early uh, chapter 64, I believe. Oh, that you would tear the heavens and come down. Mark will use the same expression at the crucifixion when he reports that the veil of the temple was torn in two. The arrival of Jesus' ministry is given full approval from the Father. Yet, there is something profoundly moving about Jesus joining the line of sinners, approaching for baptism. He identifies with us. The Son of God will live among us and will join the line of people who pray for a change of heart, a redirecting of their lives toward God. 
There's a story told about a religious community that practiced the chapter of faults. That's the process by which individual members confess their sin in a public way to their community. Sometimes the sin was pointed out by the superior. So the story goes, the superior announced that one of the members of the community has broken the vows of poverty and chastity. Not sure how obedience got skipped over, but that's the story. One of the religions, religious present, in response, walked to the middle of the brothers and knelt. Surprisingly, another member joined him. He identified with the one whose sin was publicly acknowledged. Jesus does that for us and with us today. He joins a line with us. One more story. There was a woman, I believe she was part of the pastoral department at St. Thomas University. She was giving her young child a bath. The child was just blabbering as kids, young children do, but then said something that caught the mom by surprise. So the mom asked, what did you say? Well, one should do that to a little kid. <laughs> they shut up. So mom had to coax her daughter, just, just tell me what you just said. I didn't hear it. The words finally came out. Sometimes you are my God, the child quietly said. Mom did some thinking about that experience. Her daughter had exquisitely captured a truth. The child depended on her parents for food and clothing, for safety and security, for her very life. The very things for which we depend on God. An incredible insight. What children learn from God, they learn by observing us. Parents are, to an extent, God in the process of teaching their children. By our baptism, we present God to the world. Or not. Do we act in kindness, respect, Generosity, care, compassion, wisdom, sacrifice, dignity. Do we feed the hungry, provide drink for the thirsty, visit the sick and imprisoned, clothe the naked? Or do we do the opposite? Are we insensitive, indulgent, materialistic, possessive, extravagant, selfish? Our baptism means we work and pray on a daily basis to direct our heart to God. We have a Savior, Jesus, who joins the line with us. And we hear clearly the words of the Father spoken and promised at baptism. You are my beloved Son. You are my beloved daughter. I'm so pleased with you. For the profession of faith on this the Sunday of the baptism of the Lord, let's renew our own baptismal promises. Do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the father of sin, and the prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin Mary, crucified, died, and buried, risen from the dead, now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. 
This is our faith. This is the faith of our church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. We now make known our prayers to our loving God. Thanksgiving for the gift of life and a new year. Let it bring peace and protection and health and understanding and love and generosity and kindness and redemption. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for everyone in our world, dealing with pandemic, dealing with natural disaster, dealing with violence and, and terrorism for all of us. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for strength and encouragement and consolation for the healthcare workers, the first responders, those working for the vaccine and those distributing the vaccine. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will work daily to turn our hearts toward God for a metanoia. Help us to present and represent the love of God to a world that is so wounded. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation in this time of transition, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And thanksgiving for a recently completed, very fine Kairos, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick, for Bridget Albert, Philomena Ahrens, Chris Becker, Matthew Kemp, Arlene Cavallone, Joan Dagnus, Chris Dano, Mary Claire Dano, Don Duffy, Mark Erickson, Rose George, Mark Guzman, Nikki Houlihan, Deacon Bob Kaminsky, Janice Latz, Bill Lionhood, Noreen Lionhood, Judy Lukens, Frank Marcoon, Mary Minnis, Joelle Nicolau, Carolyn Pollan, Katie Paver, Sarah Ponder, Rich Pataki, Frank Reichenberger, Patrick Rogers, Fred Roder, Laura Schraub, Marlene Sturdy, Mike Venetti, and Jeannie Williams. For all the sick that you remember in the quiet of your hearts right now, We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For any intentions you'd like to share at home with the people who are watching this with you. For the intentions of our hearts, for those who have asked for our prayers, for those for whom we've promised prayer, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, especially Grace Marie Harper, Frank Pulitzi, Joe Bustos, Raymond Lucas, and Janet E. Clavenna. We pray for those who have died of COVID, for the repose of the souls of those who have died, the consolation of those who grieve. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, hear us, help us, hold us close to your heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread and this wine to offer. Earth has given them, human hands have made them. They will become our spiritual food and our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be accepted by our loving God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. 
for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the offering of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Children of God, the Lord is with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Ron, our Bishop, Alejandro, our General, Anthony, our Provincial, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God and our Mother of Good Counsel, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Apostles and Martyrs, St. Augustine, St. Rita, St. Monica, St. Thomas of Villanova, St. Nicholas of Tolentine, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We now pray with confidence to our God, one mind and one heart. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and you say to us, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace to the Providence family. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. And for those at home, this is the time to make a spiritual communion. As I've said in the past, there is a prayer that can be read, but I think God appreciates when you speak from your own heart. Simply tell God that you love God. Ask for God to enter your heart through his Son. Even though you cannot be at Mass, the Lord can come directly to you in spiritual communion. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God indeed bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you all had a relaxing and refreshing break. We are ready to get back at it this Monday. We'll see you in school. The Mass is ended. Oh, and don't forget, wear your mask, watch your distance, wash your hands. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.